Hey, welcome to our lecture online. And here we're going to start a series on trigonometry. And we're going to start out with a basic concept. Basic concept number one, the definition of the sine. And I remember the first time that I saw trigonometry, I was completely confused. I had no idea what sines and cosines and tangents and so forth were. And uh, it took me a long time to get the feel for it. But what I'm going to try to do here is try to make it simple and straightforward. What do those strange things mean, the sine, the cosine, and so forth? So let's start with the first one called the sine, the definition of the sine. And so it all comes forward from looking at triangles. So let's say we have a triangle here, and there's an angle between the horizontal side and the uh, hypotenuse, as we would call it. Using uh, Pythagorean theorem, um, we know that the two sides, if we square each side and add them together, that is equal to the hypotenuse squared. And that's good and, and well if you know two of the three sides. But what if you only know one of the sides and you know the angle between them, then how do you find the value of the other side? So for example, if only the angle is known and we know the length of C, the hypotenuse, how do we find the length of B? Which is what we would say the opposite side to the angle. This is the adjacent side of the angle, that's the opposite of the angle. How do we find B if the only things we know is C and the angle? Pythagorean theorem no longer helps. So, to give you some examples, let's say if the angle is zero degrees, of course, if the angle is zero degrees, then the hypotenuse is right on top of the uh, adjacent side here. We have something that looks like that. And the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse, of course, is going to be zero because at that point, B is zero. But if the angle is 30 degrees, kind of like that, then the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse happens to be equal to one half. And you don't need to know yet why that is so. We'll look at that later, but just accept that, that if it's 30 degrees, this, this side divided by the hypotenuse is exactly equal to one half. If the angle is 45 degrees, then the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse is the square root of two over two, which is exactly point, or not exactly, but approximately 0 0.707. And if the angle is now 60 degrees, you can see that B gets bigger and bigger and bigger as the angle gets bigger. Then the ratio of B over the hypotenuse is getting closer to 1. It's now 0.866 or the square root of 3 over 2 to be exact. And finally, when the angle becomes 90 degrees, then of course A goes to 0. And then C and B will be the exact same length. So the ratio of B over C is equal to 1. So how do we make use of that? Well, we, des we designed, not us, because I wasn't around when it was done, but somebody very clever said, oh, I can, put, I can make that into a function. So if we go ahead and imagine a function, a relationship, because that's what usually a function is, it's a relationship between the angle and the ratio of uh, B to C. So let's say we have the ratio of B to C, and we compare that to the angle. What do we get? All right, well, if the angle is zero, then you get zero, so you start over here. And when the angle is 90 degrees, so let's say 90 degrees right here, then the value of the ratio of B over C would be equal to 1. And then in between the way it, it works, it, it kind of looks like this. So it kind of goes up and eventually reaches that and kind of curves towards the uh, value of 1. All right, so... What would we call that function? Well, we came up with a function named the sine of the angle. So we said that by definition, the sine of the angle theta is equal to, and of course, now we know that it's equal to the opposite side over the, um, over the hypotenuse. And that's how we define the sine. So if we want to find the, <coughs> if we want to find the value for B, want to find the value for B, all we have to do is solve this for B. We say then B is equal to C, which is a hypotenuse, times the sine of the angle theta. And all we have to do now is find particular values for that ratio for, ver for particular values of angles. Now, that is not a straightforward thing to do, and it used to be in the old days that we had our math books, and then we have tables, and we'd look for an angle, for example, you know, 47 degrees, we'll look up 47 degrees, and we'll get a particular value. That value was a number between 0 and 1 that gave us the exact ratio between the opposite side and C. And let's say we looked up another angle, like 22 degrees, again, we go in there, and we find the exact ratio on the, in the, uh, the book, and then we can go ahead and apply that. Of course, nowadays, with calculators, 
that has become a lot easier. So now all we do is, if we want to know what the sine of 22 degrees is, the sine of 22 degrees, which of course is the ratio of the opposite side of the triangle to the adjacent side of the triangle, we just simply plug in 22 in our calculator, we hit the sine button and out pops a number, it is 0 0.3746 degrees. So, as an example then, let's say I have a triangle, and I know that the hypotenuse C is equal to 5 feet, and I know that the angle theta is equal to 22 degrees, just like what we have over here. Oh, and I shouldn't have the degree symbol there, it's just simply a number between 0 and 1. And let's say I want to know what B is equal to. B is equal to question mark. Then, since I have a function now that defines the, the ratio of B over C as this angle right there, I can then go ahead and say, okay, then B is equal to the hypotenuse, which is 5 feet times the sine of 22 degrees. And since the sine of 22 degrees is easily found, if you have a, a calculator, this is equal to 5 feet times the number 0 0.3746. And if I multiply those two together, times 5 equals, it turns out then this is equal to 1.873 feet. And that is how we define the sine of theta, and that's how we can utilize the sine of theta. It's a very handy tool, a very handy function to know when you start working with triangles and you're trying to determine the sides of the triangle. If one side is known and the angle is known, you can easily find the sides using trigonometry. All right, so there's our first definition. In the next several videos, we're going to look at the cosine, the tangent, and some other trigonometric functions, as we call them, so we can understand how to use them.